Oh, man. It's been way too long. Been way too long. All right. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two, one. What is up? Welcome back to the Words from the Nerds podcast. Feels so great to be back. I'm ecstatic. I'm very excited to get into a lot of this stuff today. I'm not even going to do any housekeeping. I'm not going to make any promises. All I'm going to say is just stay tuned. All right. Stay tuned. Got some stuff cooking up. Won't, won't, uh, because these past three episodes, I feel like I've said something every single time <laughs> and just stuff happens. So I won't make any promises. I'll also say stay tuned. And we got a banger episode here for you today. But before I say more, let me introduce introduce the two hosts, the two co-hosts of the Words from the Nerds podcast, Charlie and Ben. Charlie, introduce yourself, brother. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Aiden, uh, for the wonderful welcome and the welcome back, <laughs> truthfully, for probably the third time uh, that we've, <laughs> we've gone away for a long period of time and, 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 and reappeared. I would like to preface and apologize if I have a very echoey sounding room. I just moved. There's no, clearly, as you can see, nothing on the walls. So this, we're, we're raw dog. We're bare bones raw dog. <laughs> So I apologize if my audio is not great, but I'm excited to be back. I just hit my mic and there's plenty of fantastic things to talk about. I know these two nerds wrote down notes. <laughs> Imagine that, <laughs> you know, uh, I just, I just ramble off of the old dome, you know, so we'll see how, uh, we'll see how this shakes out. I'm excited because I, I know what Aiden thinks about the news that we've talked about. Ben has been very tight lipped since this comic-con news came out and so i'm excited to see what his little weird ass thinks and uh yeah benjamin how are you doing today i'm doing good been been busy but i'm really glad to be back i think we're all excited for what things could look like moving forward i think we have said it basically the last few episodes have always been <laughs> like uh we're planning on doing this and then we haven't so Looking forward to actually getting back at it, especially with some of this exciting news and some of the releases that have come out or are coming out soon that we could potentially be talking about. And I am excited to talk about the Comic-Con stuff today because I had a pretty busy weekend, so I didn't really share many thoughts with you guys. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we still haven't even talked about Deadpool really like at all. So lots of exciting things that I'm very curious on because I... I, I know I saw what you guys were talking about, like in our group chat regarding the news, but still we didn't like, you guys didn't dive too far deep into it. So yeah. I will be curious to get like actual thoughts and not like talking about, you know, what the general public has been discussing on X, because I think that's some of what the conversation has been. So I'll be excited to actually like hear from all of us where we stand on different things. So should be good. I mean, you could take one look at my Twitter and see how 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 strongly I feel about this. No I've been on a tear. I've been going to bat. I've been letting the <laughs> letting the loose lips fly, to put it uh, <laughs> to put it simply. Um, but it feels good to go back to like being in the trenches over a Marvel decision. Like, I feel like a lot of this past what year, two years has been just. Oh yeah, that that movie was trash. Yeah. Oh oh, I liked this movie and a lot of people didn't. Whatever, you know. And that's just that's just been how I felt personally towards Marvel. I hate to admit it. I hate to admit it because we've always we've always praised our mighty uh, mouse overlord over here on this on this channel, and you know, stuff ended up happening. And so it feels good to to go back and 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 go to bat for for some decisions that I feel strongly about. Um, just to not put any spoilers for, for my take on the big news that we will surely touch on later, but to kick off 2024 Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, which we should have been at, we, uh, is, oh my God, <laughs> we, I just we'll, want to preface for the audience <laughs> last year, we all met up a year ago, this time in 2023, we all met up us three. We finally met up for the first time in person at San Diego Comic-Con. 
And it was probably the worst Comic Con to, <laughs> to to go to in recent memory because there was there were writer strikes, there were actor strikes. The only cool thing, granted, we were only able to get tickets for one day for each of us, so maybe there was cooler stuff that happened in the in the following days. But okay. the one day that we went was the, was Thursday, so we walked the show floor and everything. It was still cool. Like it, we met some people, um, but then to to look at this year. And Thursday this year, they screened the entirety of Deadpool and Wolverine at the at their little at their little Hall H panel. Screened the entire movie, and then the, the cast came out and and all this jazz. And then later that night, there was a drone show that was like stellar to look at. They they, they had Galactus pop up in, in, in drones with a bunch of lights, dude. Like. Uh, that's just on Thursday and they still had the whole weekend. Like, what are we talking about, man? Yeah. What a, what a, what a way to drop the ball for us, you know, not mm-hmm. wait one more year. Yeah. We could have put Ben's wedding off. Bro. We, we, like, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, dude. Very, very bummed. But, you know, like I said, bottom line is Marvel showed out and they, they got a lot of people talking nonetheless. And uh, even if we couldn't be there, I'm glad it happened. So we uh, they they kicked it off with three movies, talked about three movies, obviously got some of the news out of the way towards the end. Some of the big, uh, big stuff that we'll talk about. First one was Captain America Brave New World trailer is absolutely phenomenal. I had a blast getting to watch it before the Deadpool screening literally knocked my socks off because that was the first time I watched the trailer. I've been saving a lot of trailers and TV shows. I literally just have not been watching anything the past year. I'm going to be honest. Um, And so, like I said, first time I watched the Deadpool Wolverine trailer was um, like weeks after when we watched it on the pod. And so I got to see that trailer for the first time on the big screen. And it was absolutely phenomenal. And it looks like that's what a lot of people got to see also. Um, uh, we can make our rounds talking about Brave New World, and then I'll go over the footage that everyone got. But uh, just a quick description of what the, Kevin Feige said at the panel. Said that Captain America Brave New World will be Marvel's return to grounded aspects, which I've heard that Oops. thousands <laughs> of times before. <laughs> Charlie's breaking stuff over My there. light fell down. Uh, it will be Marvel's return to grounded aspects citing captain america the winter soldier as an example which i feel like we jump i like why how come every project that's somewhat grounded we always jump to winter soldier as a as a reference but they're doing it yet again which we kind of expected and uh yeah kicked it kicked it off with some some nice news about brave new world i don't know if anyone wants to take away with their uh quick thoughts on the movie itself before i get into Um, some more of the news i'll just talk about the trailer because uh we didn't get to talk about that on the on the pod. Thought it was a fantastic trailer, truthfully. Um, for a movie that is plagued by so many, yeah. or that was plagued, I should say, by so many reshoots and such a high budget, um, I I really want to mention something from the boys, but I can't because Aiden hasn't watched it. Go for it. Go for it. Um, go for it. You're, you're literally. It's all not there, too bro. much. It's not too much of a spoiler, but there's a scene in the boys where they basically in season four where they mock Comic Con. And they have they're announcing an A Train movie. A Train comes out, <laughs> and he's like, "You know, we've had we just finished the reshoots on reshoots on reshoots, <laughs> and that officially makes this movie the most expensive movie of all time." Oh and my god! <laughs> it's just like, I mean, obviously that's a very war- like that's not a great sign that we haven't. I don't think anybody's looked at that news for Captain America: Brave New World all the reshoots and all the rewrites that they've done and and looked at that news fondly. But, uh, I mean, so far, if they're, if they're hiding some, some really terrible blemishes, they're doing a good job with that trailer because that was bringing back. And, and like you just mentioned that Kevin Feige, uh, uh, said at Comic-Con, like they're bringing back the same vibes from winter soldier. Um, the, the same kind of espionage type, uh, thriller vibes. And I am very, very on board for it all um there's little things like the cgi didn't look great on some of the stuff but but the movie's literally not coming out until february so i don't care about that uh and then red hulk that gave me chills man that gave me Mm -hmm. chills that was fantastic benjamin 
I, unlike Aiden, have seen the trailer a couple of times. I remember when it like first came out, I was like, okay, I'll check it out. And I have to say, I really love the trailer. I think it's great. Mm. I like the kind of style of it with how it plays into like the music or like the sound effects as they're like jittering between like footage and logos and whatnot. I think that's really cool. And it does give Winter Soldier vibes, so I'm not like afraid to say that. That's not a bad thing. I just hope that it actually means something. And one of the things that I've thought about, though, is that like in recent years of Marvel, I feel like even with their pretty bad projects, they've usually been pretty good at trailers. Like even when we look back and like talk about our reaction to Wakanda Forever trailer or Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailers, usually we're pretty positive on the trailers and then it's up in the air whether or not a movie turns out to be good. So I do really like the trailer, but I, I think I've become a lot more hesitant with Marvel in recent years, like not to talk too much about Deadpool and Wolverine, but even just sitting down in the theater to watch that movie I was a lot less excited than even some of the people in my group. And it's really just because I like, I was expecting to be let down again. And so I feel like it's actually starting to hit me, like being super reserved going into a movie until I actually get to sit down and watch it. So I'm hopeful. I love the trailer, but like until I see the movie, I don't, I can't have too much confidence in it right now. That's fair. That's very fair. I, I, when I sat down for Deadpool Wolverine, I mean, this could have just been like hype. It could have just been, which this leans in Marvel's favor, especially after recent news, but it could have just been that the last Marvel movie was uh, the Marvels in November, almost a whole year removed from it. And this is the only Marvel movie this year. So maybe it was just like, Oh man, it's been so long. This movie looks promising. I felt like, Almost the same amount of, not almost the same, yeah, almost the same amount of excitement. Nowhere near the same, but like, you know, kind of right there, with, that I felt with No Way Home. Just finally being super hyped for a Marvel movie. Finally getting to see, okay, what are they going to do now? How are they going to progress the story? And it felt nice. Like I said, for the Marvels, I, I kind of sat there and I was just like, all right, you know, like I had already had my heart broken a lot with this franchise at that point. And so I felt like it was uh, that, that moment sitting down for Deadpool and Wolverine, that excitement that I felt. Uh, maybe that played into my confidence in Brave New World. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit even more confident based on some of the news we've gotten that I'll, that I'll touch on right now. Um, because we had appearances from Danny Ramirez, who plays, um, I guess, the, the Falcon, Falcon now. Yeah, yeah, New Falcon. Giancarlo Esposito, who is going to be playing Sidewinder, the leader of the Serpent Society, which I believe kept... Captain America Civil War was originally named Serpent Society. So yeah. maybe take that sure. as confirmation that, that <laughs> they're back now. Um, and that hopefully my boy Seth Rollins is uh is going to be no. in yeah. the in that serpent society. Uh we had Tim Blake Nelson and Anthony Mackey, obviously our Captain America joining the stage. Uh, then we got the news of Giancarlo Esposito's character. I have not done a ton of research just because I kind of want to just let the movie be my first yeah. take on the, on the character. I don't want to give, I don't want to walk into the movie and trash a character just because of what comics have done with them in the past before. Uh, uh, uh. I want the movie to be my first take on the character. Even if the character has been done differently in the comics, uh, uh, uh. But we'll touch on that later. Um, and then audience audiences were shown a clip of uh captain america brave new world and um i'll go ahead and touch on that right now and then i'll let y'all two take it away with y'all's thoughts um what followed after this announcement is the same footage that was shown at cinemacon 2024 along with the scene featuring the new president thaddeus ross played by harrison ford directly talking about the celestial that came out of the earth at the end of the eternals and the production of adamantium huge news Sam Wilson is shown with Joaquin in his Falcon suit as they're flying together. Oh, give me that. Inject that into my veins. And the footage ends with President Ross becoming the Red Hulk at the podium in front of the White House. Red Hulk's face looks exactly like Ford, only with yellow eyes and black hair. Release date, Valentine's Day next year. 
So uh, whoever wants to take that away. Oh, this is interesting real quick. Uh, I didn't know this was written by um, Sean Levy along with three other people. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. Really? Rhett Reese, Paul Rurnick, uh, Zeb Wells, and Sean Levy. Yeah. Interesting. Anyways. Yeah, um, Zeb Wells. Ooh, icky. What, what have icky. they done? He's uh he's the head writer of the current Amazing Spider-Man comic run, and it's getting oh, that really? run has gotten a ton of hate. So Ooh, that's tough. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, so some pretty crazy footage. I'll let one of y'all take it away. Uh I mean, yeah, I uh it sounds really cool. I I that sounds like the um Ross isn't gonna be afraid to let the whole country know that he's messing around with the the Hulk formula so uh either that or it's involuntary that could be another true. thing that's true um i that wouldn't surprise me either truthfully uh i i do uh, i mean it sounds like like aiden said just watching them fly together that's going to be amazing and also i make super you know what i'm super excited for is for people to finally stop complaining about nobody mentioning the <laughs> the, the celestial <laughs> coming out of the ocean um it sucks to hear uh, a little side note thing, not to get too far off track, but it sucks to hear about no news on Eternals 2 as a big Eternals lover. That's uh, it's bad for me, but whatever. Regardless, we move. Um, <laughs> but still, the legacy of the movie lives on through uh, Adamantium. That's another thing for me. Don't know if I love that Adamantium is seemingly going to be what the Celestials are made out of because Adamantium... It's, I mean, it's semantics. It really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. I'm not like th that attached to it, but I'm pretty sure adamantium was like a man-made alloy it, from in the in the comics. Like it wasn't like vibranium, which comes from space. Mm -hmm. Like now we're gonna have both the strongest metals come from, both come from space. You know, like I would have liked it if like adamantium was like humanity's try at making vibranium. You know, like I thought I thought that would have been That'd somewhat be sick, cool too. Yeah. But not, I, but again, like Aiden kind of just mentioned, like movie's not out and I'm not going to judge it before I, before I see it and whatnot. So, um, there's still lots more to, to, to see. And, uh, I didn't even get to see the, that footage myself because we decided not to go. <laughs> <laughs> ben, what were your thoughts on this, uh, this footage? Yeah, I think the main thing that I'll touch on is the celestial slash adamantium and how they're planning to explain that because they do really need to explain it and i like i'll like it if they have a justified way of explaining how it actually is going to be implemented into the mcu because even like think back to the amazing tv show that was she hulk that there was like the news articles that said the celestial, a celestial that was coming out of the earth and also about like the Wolverine reference yeah. basically at the same time. And so a question of like, was that more just like a clever line that they wanted to mislead you with? Or is this actually happening? Like adamantium is not only now on earth, but we actually do have mutants already and we just don't know about it. And that's why I think like, their explanation for it really needs to make sense. They need to make sure that we know when it happened and how that translates eventually into its future use, however that may be uh, with different characters and different storylines and whatnot. So I'm open to the idea. I think, Charlie, the idea you suggested honestly sounds like even better, but like if they set it up well enough, then like I won't be upset if this is the approach that they take. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna be too married to the idea of adamantium coming from humans specifically. Like it's not that big of it. As long as adamantium's here, that's what I care about the most, probably. So yeah, like Ben said. I mean, uh, I'll trust the process for now until I really start to judge too, too harshly. Um, however, the footage that that. The footage description of what everyone was shown really does have me uh, very excited. Uh, I'm excited to see them kind of perfect the CGI on Red Hulk because the Hulk has never really looked that bad at all in any Marvel movies. Uh, obviously, She-Hulk was a little rough, but the Hulk himself really has a great track record. Even Edward.
Edward Norton's Hulk um, in terms of looking good in CGI. So I'm excited to see another Hulk and, and I'm excited to see Harrison Ford's uh, Red Hulk. I think that'll be super fun. And I'm also excited to see his press run for whenever this starts to uh, pick up because oh. he had me dying this past week. No, yeah, he, uh, I don't know if you saw, he was, somebody asked him what he thinks about, um, I don't consider this a spoiler, mm -hmm. uh, what, he, somebody asked him what he thinks about anchor beings, <laughs> and then yeah. who he thinks the anchor being in 616 is, and he just walked away from the interview, he's like, <laughs> uh, that is out of my orbit, <laughs> just walked away. Dude, oh he's God. hilarious, I saw another one where they had asked, they had, I knew, the interviewer knew what they were doing. They asked him a obviously like a, a nerdy MCU question. And he was like, you know, I seem to have he said something along the lines of like, I seem to be great with these questions. So my answer is I'm not answering your stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> oh I was like, God. dude, oh just wait. Just wait until uh until we get the press run for this. But yeah, um a lot of people seem to be going crazy over the uh the Red Hulk. Stuff Harrison Ford walked out on the stage, gave a big Hulk impression, and expressed his gratitude for being welcomed into the MCU and says that he's always wanted to be a piece of that. So up next, you know, that was some big for money. Yeah, yeah. He always he's wanted always to be a piece money. of that for, uh, for money. To set his grandchildren's grandchildren up. <laughs> um up next was David Harbour arriving at Hall H in a red guardian costume for thunderbolts asterisk um they all took the stage sebastian stan florence Pugh, julia dreyfus lewis pullman geraldine this one um wyatt russell all on there hannah john came in said that her ghost or explained that on ghost where we find ava and how she works with others is going to be interesting which seems to be the theme of this um obviously is that this group of characters just don't get along. Uh, they were described as a team that is struggling and reluctant to work together. And yeah, what was everyone's thoughts on uh, on the Thunderbolts before I get into this uh, footage that was shown? I'll let uh, I'll let Ben go first on this one. I think of all of the topics we're going to cover today, this one is the one that I have the least amount of thoughts on. I think. I am very hesitant on how they're going to pull this whole like team dynamic off. And also even just like the approach that they're going to have, it seems like it's going to be kind of spy thriller esque from the things that we know about it. I do like the little bit of kind of hope that I have for it is a, I think Florence Pugh who apparently is going to like really heavily be the focus in the movie or at least like, gets enough screen time to where she really stands out and shines in the movie. I think she's a great actress. And so exploring, exploring her character more and seeing how they do that, I think will be cool. And then also the director of the film, his name is Jake Schreerer, I think is how you pronounce it. Yeah. Has literally done nothing. He's done nothing, <laughs> but most recently he mm -hmm. did most of the beef show on Netflix. And the reason why that's interesting in, to me, the reason why that's interesting to me is because that show is about people who can't work well together. Like that's the whole premise of the show is like a conflict. And then these two characters that are forced to be together for different various reasons. And they don't like it at first and kind of how that grows. So I think yeah. I'm pretty sure he did like, six or seven episodes of the 10 for that show. Interesting. So that like, that gives me like a little bit of hope that like he can at least pull off the team dynamic that I think they're going for. And then what they actually do with the movie, if there's a villain and like the storyline, that's just all up in the air. So little like slimmers of things that I think are cool and give me a little bit of hope. But at this point, I don't, feel like i know too much to like fully say if i'm on board with it yet there uh on terms of i'll let charlie give his thoughts but on um you brought up villain there was something teased at the end of this footage so i'll get into that and uh i don't know if you know ben but i think charlie knows 
my boy uh, uh, Steve Yoon, who surprisingly worked with Shreer on beef. So yeah. there you go. Anyways, Charlie, take it over. Um, I just want to uh, say uh, that was mo- that was mostly a joke. Uh, what when I'm saying I'm in with the dir- I am in, but I want to say that I was already in before it. I think I was gonna say I feel like I'm the only one. <laughs> that's actually like somewhat excited for this movie because everybody's kind of just writing this off already. Uh, And I can't really define my excitement uh, necessarily. Part of it is because of what Aiden is going to mention when I'm done talking here about the, the tease of the, of the villain for sure. That's definitely, I know that that's part of it, but as for the rest of it, it it, like, it doesn't seem like it should excite me. It's just a, a seemingly random, mosh posh of 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 characters that as ben mentioned don't go well together and shouldn't go well together so why is this making sense but honestly the description of the footage sounded pretty good to me um i i I read it today i think and i'm sure aiden might uh cover that as well but it truthfully seems I, I'm, I'm really, I was trying to find it while Ben was talking. I couldn't find it, but I, I, somebody had this great take on it that like this movie has the potential to be really damn good in the sense that it can cover all these characters that are cast aside by the audience and the people within the 616 universe. Like people just essentially don't care about these individuals um, with the exception of like Bucky, like Cap really loved Bucky, but mm-hmm. uh Everyone else, like they, they kind of like they've had to make their own way, and they've made bad decisions along that way. And so, trying to to to, to deal with what it's like to um, not have a place in the world, I guess, which is a, a common theme that we've seen with other characters in the MCU, i.e., Thor, etc. Um, but I, I that kind of idea always interests me, and I'm always on board for something like that and so but i i do think that most of it is probably about the uh the villain for me more than anything so i mean understandable um yeah i mean this honestly if you take a lot if you take all the the uh, actors in here they're almost literally all side characters Mm -hmm. with the exception of maybe wyatt russell's um captain america and uh Maybe Sebastian Sands, Bucky. Uh, even then, you could still argue that they were side characters. Um, so, yeah, it'll be very interesting to uh, see how it all plays out. I was looking at Jake Schreer's stuff, and I, I was like, I was like, what has he done? And I saw about five-ish music videos for Benny Blanco that I guess he just huh. was directing. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm automatically out. And then you said beef, and I was automatically back in. So... I don't know. I'm still a little bit nervous just based on the track record. I hope that, you know, they uh, they find a way to make it work. But I'll get into the uh, the uh, test footage. Or I the just footage have to say, shown. some music video directors, they could. I mean, yeah. Like, like, uh, like let's not yeah, discredit I, him for that. It's just more so the past three movies he's done all have like with the exception of one are all like at like a 40 50 percent of rotten tomatoes which is i know rotten tomatoes hit or miss but still i'm like mm. you know robert and frank uh or robot and frank or whatever it was i'm like all right you know you're not really <laughs> you're not really uh getting brownie points with me anyway so here's the exclusive footage des- description The footage begins with Yelena visiting Alexei's messy and unkept apartment, asking if he's fulfilled. A dramatic version of the Pixie song, Where Is My Mind, begins to play as the Thunderbolts are each individually assigned to the same assignment and end up fighting each other. Uh, A character named Bob is shown in a hospital gown, is introduced before the footage ends. Now, this character, Bob that was uh, shown in a hospital gown is obviously our introduction to Sentry in the MCU, who is basically a freaking badass Homelander, I guess. Uh, He's just, I mean, another Superman if he was evil, but has a really interesting story. He was supposed to be played by Steven Yoon from Beef and last second just backed out out of nowhere. Um, 
as well I as guess, Io. I'm bummed I about guess, Io and Embry as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her too, yeah. Um, both just seemingly came out of nowhere, especially Io. I didn't even know that she was in it until I got the news that she dropped out. Um, <laughs> but Lewis Pullman is going to be um, in the role of uh, Sentry. I'm trying to pull up a image right here. Um, he has a look. He has a look for it. If I do say so myself, he was in Top Gun Maverick. And so uh, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, it's up on the screen right now. If not, you can just, uh, you know, kind of look on your own time. But yeah, a character named Bob shown in a hospital gown. Pretty interesting way to uh, approach him. But like I said, I'm trusting the process. Um, I'm a little bit, I am a little bit like to myself on, on uh, just after all the news. Whereas like, you know, the movie we're talking about next, uh, I am like even more through the roof excited for it on this one i'm i'm a little bit more excited for it but i'm continuing to to keep my uh i can't find the freaking term i'm just gonna say if this is right or wrong i don't care i'm uh, continuing to keep my cards close to my chest on this on this film so yeah i will say i am excited though uh that test footage does sound pretty cool and i love that where is my mind is uh, attached to the movie as well yeah that, I, I thought that was cool when I heard that information. Still haven't seen Top Gun Maverick, by the way. It's a little side thing. Um, oh, but man. You're missing out. You got to get on that. I, I just wanted also, to – Damn it, it's my life. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, I will – before I forget, uh, we did get a glimpse at a new costume for Ghost. Just to throw Oh, that yes. I heard about that as well. Ghost, I'm like, eh, I don't really – Yeah. Care. I yeah. don't care that much. Um, but – yeah, I, I mean, I'm also interested uh, about the asterisk at the uh, end of the mm -hmm. title. Um, they were directly asked about that on stage, I saw, and they didn't give an answer. They just said, you'll have to watch the movie. And I just don't like, I, are they going to change the name? Like, I, I'm think, what I'm thinking right now is like at the end of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier TV show, how every intro had had uh, it popped up with just like the white text falcon and winter soldier and in the last episode it ended and then it had that same white letters pop up but this time it said captain america and the winter soldier um so i'm thinking like is it just going to be like that like all this asterisk is they're gonna, they're going to find the team name and then that's what it's going to it's going to pop up at the end of the movie or something like that and it's like I mean that's oh, cool, I guess, but I feel like you're get you're being you guys are being a little bit like too coy about that if that's all it is. So that's what leads me to believe that maybe it isn't, but I don't know, maybe I'm coping. So I think it has to be something more than that. They wouldn't yeah. go so far as to have the the title and the actual like logo reflect that just to change the name at the end. Like I think if they were gonna do that, which seems like something they could do. They just wouldn't have the asterisks, and then they'd just do it in the movie, and it wouldn't be a big deal. But yeah. it's the fact that, like, not only is it in the logo, but they've pointed it out. There are questions around it, which typically, like, the questions that they ask for, like, a Marvel panel are usually the questions that people want answers to, and then they just don't give them answers to them. They're just acknowledging the questions. And so I'm not surprised that they would ask about it. But it seems like it has to be a bit bit of a bigger deal. I just don't know what that might be. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm with I'm in the same boat as uh Ben. We're I don't have too many thoughts on this, but I'll be interested to see what uh what we got cooking with Sentry. Um, all right. Takes us on to our next movie, which strap in. Strap in wherever you are right now, wherever you're uh listening at. Strap in because we got some Fantastic Four news. Um, they had footage shown. I'll kind of go through this in order of what was all going on. So we'll save the big one for later, the uh, the new name for it. Um, and we'll start with the footage description, which says there was some plot details, actually, that Shackman talked about that I'll read. It's just, I mean, basically what we what we all know somewhat. Director Mac Shackman stated that he wants the powers of Fantastic Four to feel real. Talking to scientists and animal experts, which I think is really cool. It looks like he's uh, trying to put his all into this, which I can appreciate because I'm sure he saw the, the discourse around WandaVision and 
you know, I can't blame the man for putting his all into this. The film will not just be doing a 1960s setting and aesthetic, but a futuristic version of the time period. Uh, so think Fallout uh, for all the Fallout fans out there. Shackman would say that the New York in the film is what you've seen from the 60s and something more, which okay kind of interesting kind of getting getting cooking here uh do you want me to stop before i get into footage description so y'all can uh share thoughts on that uh, itself? i mean yeah i love to talk about my fa my fantastic four okay hey, come fantastic on buddy Rem you gotta remember who who was uh the biggest <laughs> shill for this movie when we first yeah, got me. it announced i remember yeah no big deal bro i remember you were you were all high on blade that's what it was uh, <laughs> no he hated blade we got to pull up that uh ranking again oh yeah, yeah well i mean no, in comic con spirit we might as well see how far we've come but uh yeah go ahead uh charlie with your uh your thoughts um you know i when they because that's this has been a rumor for a while about the the 60s setting didn't love it when i first heard it but uh I don't know if we were planning on talking about um we're not going to show it for yeah, sure Yeah, definitely but, not going to show it. Um, we but, talking, uh, that's why I have the footage description pulled up. Okay. Um the stuff that they showed in Hall H for only Fantastic 4 for some reason leaked. got a whole trailer and it apparently starts filming tomorrow? How do you yeah, have a whole trailer to... and it starts filming yeah. tomorrow? What are we doing? <laughs> um they uh <laughs> that whole trailer leaked images of the concept art for uh, how New York is apparently going to look. Um, I would say that the car, the fantastic car leaked, but they had that like a replica of it flying around Hall yeah. H. So like, that's not really a, a leak, but uh, I will say I was not down for it at first when all these rumors about the 60s okay. setting, I was not down for it. Uh, but seeing it, especially the the concept image of, of New York, it, assuming that that one is real, that one could be faked. I, I'm not sure. If it is real, I love I love how that looks. And I think there was also, I think Discussing Films posted officially, there is a, like a little drawing of how the Baxter building is supposed to look. And yeah, yeah, yeah. that looks really good to me. And so I'm super excited about that. I was worried when... Uh, we were when we were watching the tweets live, or I guess uh, just just me when I was watching the tweets live. Uh, I believe it was discussing films <laughs> that said, uh, uh, "What did they say that Reed, that Reed was talking with an older accent, with an old style accent?" Yeah. And I was like, "What? Is, I don't even like what does that mean?" And then so seeing the leaked footage because that worried me a little bit because I was like, "I don't know what that means," and I don't know if I like that. It's probably uh, transatlantic, I, right? I didn't I, watch the footage. I definitely, I would never watch any leaked footage of any Mar. I would not. <laughs> so I'm assuming it's transatlantic. Yeah. Right, see. And that's uh, see that's and that's what I imagined. I like I didn't like that. And like, wait, have you actually like? Have you not watched? <laughs> Dude, you definitely one? have <clears throat> not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Okay. Um. Because it, in the actual video, like it's 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 good. It's actually good. Like I don't dislike it at all. Mm -hmm. I was just worried that it was going to be like that, and then like if if or when they transition to the regular six one six universe, they're, they're still going to talk like that. You know, like I wasn't I wasn't a fan of that idea. But yeah, uh, seeing the actual footage, uh, yeah, yeah, man. No, that's that's good. That's a good yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, I, mean, okay. like, I was gonna say that's like, <laughs> a, that's a good that's a good yeah, yeah. Um. Especially the 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 Galactus part, bro. That was, that part got me so excited. But more than anything, just like I, I'm seeing the dynamics already. There's I think only one little part of that trailer where there's a clip of uh, Ben and Reed together, and they're just like standing, like getting fitted for their spacesuits or something. Yeah. And I just I love Evan. Oh man, yeah, dude, Evan, e Evan and Pedro together, bro. Like that's just that's gonna be fire, bro. They as, cooked. As friends. They freaking cooked so, so good, hard. Bro. That is so good. I, I, I've I've literally nothing like when I heard that they were shooting, they start shooting tomorrow. I'm super excited. I'm so oh, excited. My baby, my sweet Fantastic Four film. <laughs> that is going to be my kid right there, bro. Like everyone had their number ones. Charlie, you had Guardians, I think, or like you know, you were I don't think big. you had Fantastic Four. Don't lie. Yeah, I Fantastic, have it up. What? Fantastic Four was my number one. Oh my god. Yeah, Come his on. Number, his number Shut two up. was uh Kang Dynasty, the 
Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we're just replacing that with do with uh, with news later Ooh. with the news we got later. So looks like anyways, uh, yeah, looks yeah, like we're gonna have to redo if Aiden's pick got tossed away. <laughs> uh, technically, technically not really. It's uh, it's still the fifth Avengers movie as far. Well, as is it still your number two? Excited though. Now that it's uh, I mean, I can't change it now. So uh, I guess we'll see. I, I, the question is, does my list hold up after? All the news we get. Mine holds which... up right now. I think Charlie's is the worst by oh, no. far. Wait, did Charlie have Guardians Volume? I three had Blade at first? the bottom. You guys had Blade like halfway up. Where's Blade? Where is it? I don't see it. Where's Blade? <laughs> I see Secret Invasion above Loki Season Two, <gasps> above Secret Wars, above <gasps> Captain America. Oh, no. All right. And all guess right. what was above Secret Invasion? The Marvels and then Quantum Mania at five. Dude, I was dude. You can't lie. The hype for Quantum way. Mania, the first time we were gonna fully see Kang, that was bro. The hype was there for that. You got me tripping. Oh man, so right. so I didn't continue. put it that high. That's we'll all. we'll we'll pull that up uh, at, after all this. Um, let me get into this footage description. Um, the footage filmed in a 4-3 aspect ratio looks like it's playing on a retro television. Starts with Reed Richards uh, teaching a classroom. Asking if they want to see an explosion. The thing is seen on the on a retro dating show, the dating game, but only as a silhouette. Looked very, very, very good. Uh, the footage ends with the team in astronaut suits with the last names of the characters on the suits as they enter a retro futuristic looking rocket before the ship takes off. And the aspect ratio of the footage changes. Oh, my God. The chills I'm getting right now just reading this. The footage ends with Galactus's face. Behind a, a building, uh, part of his face is seen through the building, and it's clear that he is a comic accurate look. Oh man! Uh, release date July twenty fifth, so uh, four days ago, uh, almost next year exactly. One year after Damn. Deadpool, they're probably going to do the same thing next year, but with Fantastic Four, they're going to show the whole movie in Hall H. It's probably that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, they'd probably do the same thing they did with Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, I thought, I mean, I'm so excited for it. There's not really much more I can say that I haven't already shown by my screaming and jumping around. I'm very excited for this. I think the cast cooked. Pedro Pascal and uh, Vanessa Kirby already have chemistry out the freaking roof. Dude, oh, my God. They in are my interviews, bro. Too. Oh man, she knows what she's doing, man. She, Dude, she's no, like, I'm, seriously. I'm getting this she's check, cast. No, so man. I'm gonna go create. Like, I'm gonna play this up. Like, we're getting money bags. Um, she was like, "You think, look so sexy in your space suit." Like, Did you see that, brother? <laughs> brother this oh is my god, too. I need this. I need this, this is bro. Too. Um, I need and this. honestly, like, bro, I just can't. Oh, I just can't wait to see that dynamic. Just Pedro, just kind of being like, "All right, all right, let me let me work over here." Like, oh, <laughs> come on. Um, obviously, Eben, we talked about, looked uh, fantastic, especially as um, Reed's best friend. I think Joseph Quinn, I was I was, I was, was hesitant at first, man. Seeing that shaved head, I hope they keep the shaved head. I don't know if they will. But uh, he looked he, – he even fit the role too. I mean, dare I say, I was skeptical at first, but seeing him on stage with everyone else, I mean, they just – they won the night. I mean, oh, they won the night. It, 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 I'll get into the other part later, but they they definitely, in terms of uh, excitement, won me over and uh, dropped their title. Fantastic Four, first steps. For mankind, one giant leap. Yep. I like it. It's beautiful. What can I say? I like it. It's just gorgeous. I love how lately, too, with all the Marvel Studios, like the just the wording – They've been matching it to the logo now lately yeah. instead of just having it be a separate red and silver. Yeah. I love this this uh I love this logo. I mean it looks it looks awesome. The logo looks yeah, awesome. More, the though. the title. I mean, come on, I have it at my number one. Of them, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the fantastic four news that we all got. Uh let me see if yeah, so uh, oh and then Michael Giacchino returns to compose. Oh, yes. Yes, um, yes, yes. for those that don't know. The Batman, that's all I gotta say. We'll yeah, be composing the Fantastic Four movie. Very exciting. I will say, I don't know if it's that I I think it's just that I've gotten tired. Oh, my light just died, so I guess we're stuck like this. <laughs> but I think I got like 
a little bit tired of uh, of his uh, Michael Giacchino's Spider Man um, score a little bit. Like I, it's still iconic. I still love it, but I've gotten I've I've grown tired of it. But yes, the the, the Batman is a good is a good call out um, for that specifically. So I'm still on board for it, for him being the composer. Don't get me wrong, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, I mean, he's an but, absolute goat, dude. Yeah. I mean, literally, just look at his fucking goddamn. He can he's, even direct. He's him. He, he is him, direct, bro. Mm-hmm. He can even direct. Werewolf by Night, crazy. I didn't love it as much as Ben, the little D writer over here. What'd you think, man? What do you What do you think of the Fantastic Four, man? You Hi, yeah, you're scaring you know? me with how quiet you are. Yeah, first you haven't said all, much, man. First of all, I really liked Werewolf by Night. We know I don't know. I don't know where yeah. you're getting that from. That I. I don't know what you're saying, but I'm saying that you like it. You're, a, you, I'm saying that you're a dick rider, bro. That's what I'm saying. Because I like it. Okay. Damn it. Yeah. Quit making dropping. me drop my light. <laughs> keep Three dropping strikes. lights, buddy. Three strikes. He's out. Yeah. I had, I had Fantastic Four decently high, but I think I explained this when we did our tier list that for me, I don't have a connection to them like you guys do. I watched the original two fantastic four movies i think sometime last year i haven't seen fan four stick at all and just like in general i didn't grow up watching these movies or these characters i don't have a strong draw to them or a strong connection and so why do you look so confused not that not not that i think you should watch fan four stick but just like that's crazy to me you Why is that a Marvel crazy? fan, brother? Like, you have to. You don't you be watching. Stuff? I mean, I have. I still. I haven't seen all the X Men movies. Like, I don't... which ones have you not seen, man? Most of the latter half of them. Days of Future Past. Have you not seen Days of Future Past? <laughs> seen... Oh my god, brother! You haven't seen Days of Future Past, bro. No, dude. It is Days of Future Past of is best... fantastic. It's one of the best superhero movies ever. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I'll go that far, but it's fantastic. No, it's I, literally in my some top. Some people 10. do go that far, but I personally I don't think I would go that far. It's but literally in my top. 10. I know I know people love it and I like I don't remember when, but I hadn't seen like any of them and so I was watching through all of them for the first time and I think that was the one that I like stopped at because of like busyness or whatever and I just never went back and finished like my watch through. But I've seen Everything before that, and I haven't seen what's it's after that. First, Apocalypse class. Yeah. Okay. Right. But I haven't first seen class, Apocalypse. You um, can, you can go. With Dark that, Phoenix, though. New Mutants, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You I can go with all three yeah. of those. Honestly, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I'll probably I'll at least watch Days of Future Past and Apocalypse at some point, just because I feel like that's kind of the main franchise. Dark Dark Phoenix continues that as well. Mm. Um, okay. So. Anyways, I don't really have a history with these characters and I didn't grow up reading like comic books or anything. So for me, my introduction to this family in the MCU will be like a very fresh experience other than like, you know, the two original movies, uh, which like are both okay movies. I don't particularly love either of them. I think they're both just all right. Um, So I think... I was fine with the casting for part of that reason because I don't have like this image of what these characters should be. So when the cast came out and everyone was like, oh, this is just popular actor casting, I was like, I don't see that necessarily as a bad thing because, yeah, like they seem like they can play the characters well enough and they're good actors. It's not like, like I'm sure we'll talk about this later. Like, regardless of what you think about a specific person playing a specific character, they're good actors. So like, yeah. you know that they're going to put in work into this performance. So, but everything I saw from them interacting with each other at Comic-Con, that seems really cool. And then also uh, the footage I'm a big fan of. I love the vibe that it has going for it. And I didn't know specifically what this whole like set in the past, but futuristic, I didn't know how that vibe would quite look, but I feel like from the little bit that we saw, I know exactly what that means. And I think like that has me more on board with this. Not only like, you know, the director, you know, can be debated how well that's going to go over. Like a director can, 
a director can have some misses and can have some hits and like you can't use that to say for sure if something's going to be good or not but just between the cast and the vibes that I'm getting from the little bit that we have seen I'm I think I'm more I'm more faithful and on board with this project than the other two that we've talked about so far yeah that's good to hear even though we've had a full trailer for Captain America I feel better about Fantastic Four just because of what I've seen that I mean that yeah. gives me a lot more faith in that movie and, and I feel like it's I feel like um it's not horrible to have a lot more faith in these movies that are just now starting to go into production just now starting to film because they've been so far removed from you know what the the down the downtime of Marvel was these these past couple of year, couple of years um so that was totally fair um, and so, yeah, that was a Fantastic Four stuff. It, obviously, I mean, there was one more thing. Uh, they are confirmed to be appearing in the next two Avengers movies, which is one of those things where it's like, yeah, we kind of knew that was going to happen, but it's for some reason it's super hype hearing that be confirmed. Um, it is also interesting that they did confirm it and they did just say, oh, yeah, they're they're going to be in the next two. Like, then they, what, does, what does Fantastic Four kind of play a part in uh, – in these next movies, you know, they, he said, um, they said that all, th- uh, all three of the, the cast of all three of those movies will be in all of the Avengers. So Captain America, Brave New World and Thunderbolts. That's oh, they, really, he, yeah. He said the, he said the, all three of the, all three, the cast of all three of these movies will appear in the next two Avengers films. All right. Oh. He might've just said the next Avengers film. Um, but oh, I think Fantastic Four was confirmed also for Secret Wars. For maybe. both of them. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I mean, I feel like similar to Infinity War Endgame that will have like, will have a lot of characters in the next Avengers movie. And then Secret Wars is where it's like, they can just will, unleash absolutely anything. I mean, we, I mean, they're both, I mean, they're a year apart, both of these two movies. So, I mean, you know. Again, it's just one of those things where you kind of expect everyone to be in it, but to hear it confirm makes it uh, makes it super hype. And with that, speaking of these next two Avengers movies, who's going to be directing them? The mother loving Russo brothers got some confirmation that the Russo brothers will be back. And I, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, they had a bad track record. Oh, they went with, with they went with those uh, those big budget Netflix movies. Obviously, it didn't didn't turn out well. So where did that bring them? right back to marvel and the other way around marvel had some duds and where did that bring them right back to the russo brothers it's what works it's what works it's what has worked for the past 10 years so why not stick with it i for one am in love with uh with that news i think it's awesome i would i would like benjamin to go first okay always making me go first i guess um you went first twice Calm down. <laughs> so I think an important detail that I would also like to bring up is that they also revealed some of the writers for both of the films, mm-hmm. which were some of the co-writers for Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah. So I think I honestly think that writers are almost just as important as directors when it comes to these movies. Yep. And that like based on that type of history, you can also kind of get a better idea of of these movies. And so there's been a lot of discourse about this, obviously, with people talking about how they're just trying to play it safe and, and go back to try and win over the fans. And regardless of what people have said, any reason that somebody has brought up, like, why isn't that a good thing? The Russo brothers, not even arguably, they absolutely have the best run of movies of superhero movies that we have ever seen from Mm -hmm. any franchise ever their four movies in the mcu is the best stretch of four movies bar none i don't think there's even an argument and so for people to think that this is a bad thing that marvel is going back to them it's like you wanted marvel to be saved and you want it to feel like it used to but this this was peak Marvel. Like we're literally returning to form and going back to when Marvel was at its at its best before you started to hate on it. And I'm saying 
before yeah. you as in like, you know, the general audiences. And so I'm a big fan of this decision. And I think while there is a part of me who's like, is there a chance that they're, I don't know, forcing this to try and save it and it's actually not going to work out and they're not going to be able to pull this off in the next you know, year and a half, two years by the time that Avengers 5 comes out? Maybe. Maybe they just announced this and they're still trying to figure it all out. But what my gut tells me is like, no, they are listening to fans and they're going back to something that worked. And that's not always a good thing, but it's not usually a bad thing. So I, I actually, I like this choice from them. And I think it gives me a lot of hope for the direction that they could be heading. I think my bigger concern as a whole with these two Avengers movies is more so the setup leading up to them. Because the thing about getting to Infinity War was that we did have other movies like right before it that built up into that. And right now, just with everything with Kang and everything, the multiverse saga feels a little directionless. There's a lot of cool ideas, but they're not they're not leading towards anything right now. And so I think that's the more important thing. I think as long as they have that set up, the Russo brothers absolutely will deliver. Couldn't agree more. <sighs> yeah. Um, I want to preface... Um, I do like the decision. I love the Russo brothers. Glad they're back. Um, I also love the other thing that we're going to talk about. Um, but I won't talk, I won't, I won't mention that yet, but everything I'm about to say also ties into that. Um, <clears throat> I made a TikTok about this, which Benjamin would probably know if he didn't delete the app, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> I, the only reason that I dislike it is pretty much for what Benjamin talked about, but in a different, from a different angle. I think that it gives validity uh, and credence to all of the people that were shitting on the MCU since Endgame ended, shitting on every project, most of phase four, uh, calling it quantity over quality, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all the, all the talking points. I don't like the decision because it seems like to me that they are, instead of trying to further adjust to what they were doing before, they're just cutting the rope and falling back to where they they know is safe. Um, which again, I, I still like the decision. I'm not upset by it, uh, truthfully. I just hate that the MCU is in shambles crowd gets to shout that they were right now. I hate that. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I think overall it's uh, obviously it's going to be, it's going to be great. I think having two directors is way better than having one, not to uh, give any sympathy to Joss Whedon. Cause I think we've learned over the years that he's a, he's a dickhead, mm -hmm. but um, it seemed like Avengers one or Avengers two compared to Avengers one, just beat that man down like being a solo director for uh, and that wasn't even like think about the all, all the characters he juggled in that one compared to how much if he had continued he would have had to juggle with infinity war endgame etc and so now it's going to be that times 10 with these multiversal variants etc cetera, etc cetera. um uh, so that's why i think it's great that we have a, a, a directing pair uh but it also falls into what i'm saying with with what ben mentioned stephen mcfeely is back uh he co-wrote uh not only the avengers movies but uh the other movies that the russo brothers worked on captain america winter soldier as well as civil war and i again i love that news i think uh, stephen mcfeely fantastic writer i think he's going to do a great job but it falls into the same camp for me, and I might have mentioned this uh, in our group chat. Um, I think when the rumor about the Russos coming back ha ha had happened, it's the same reason that I don't want John Watts back for the next potential Tom Holland trilogy. I want a new, I want a new mind, a new mind behind it, a new fresh with fresh ideas, fresh concepts. Because uh, I don't, 
it's not that I don't think John Watts could could handle a, a Peter in college trilogy or whatever they're planning to do with it. I just don't want the same sort of, I don't know, origin story three times in a row, maybe like it, depending on who you talk to about it. I don't want backtracking. I want sticking to your ideas, even no matter how many people call it and call him iron boy, junior, et cetera, et cetera. And so with the Russo brothers, I think that they are more than capable. And it, I, it sounds like from what we're going to talk about next, they have a, a, a plan. I'm really interested to see where that plan's going, but more than anything, I I really would have loved to have seen a, a different a different take on 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 the Avengers as a whole. Granted, it's a whole new roster now, so we'll see what where they where they go with it. But also, just with this next piece of news, they're bringing in another person that they that they wrote for already, and assuming that that's what this is. And we're, again, we're going to dive into that. I know I keep t- walking on eggshells around it, but it's just so much of it just screams like we're trying to go back to what worked. And which, again, I know what Ben mentioned, I don't think is inherently wrong. I don't think that's wrong. I love that era of the MCU. Most people love that era of the MCU. But coming from somebody who hasn't hated all of most of Phase 4, who liked a lot of Phase 4, with and 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 bits and pieces of phase five for the little bit of the way that we are into it right now, like I don't know. I was I liked the direction that we were going with different ideas, different people um, branching out, and which is why it breaks my heart that there's no news on Eternals too. You know, uh, and obviously, the, and I mentioned this in my TikTok. There were stinkers. Uh, you had stuff like Black Widow, Eternals. If you didn't like it, um, as well as Echo probably wasn't really that good. I don't know if I'd call it a stinker. Wasn't, but it was really wasn't. I don't. I don't you didn't watch it, did you, Ben? You haven't. You still haven't seen Echo. I haven't watched it either. Or no, it was Aiden. It was Aiden. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, it. Uh, I. There, there's stinkers, but then we get things like Shang Chi, really damn good, right? No Way Home, really damn good. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which you could you could say that that's an outlier because that's James Gunn. He's got the, he, and he got to do whatever he wanted to do before he dipped out. Sure, um, Loki season two, like coming from somebody who didn't love Loki season one, going into Loki season two, man, and what like I think that that is some of the best shit the MCU has put out. I think Loki season two is that fucking good, man, and like I, I don't know, man. Not that I think that they can't. Oh, sorry. I was trying to think of, of the other direction I was trying to go with this. What about Kang? I know that Loki season two puts Kang in a place where essentially he can be wrapped up. I think that they there's a couple of lines of dialogue where they allude to the fact that they are wrapping up that story. And now there's there's different intricacies you can get into whether they they abandon it because of Jonathan Majors and the stuff that he was involved with. Or if it was more because uh, of the reception of Ant Man and the Lost Quantum Mania, but like, there's still so many like open ended, not so many, um, but the Coliseum of Kangs is that just included in the TVA saying, oh, we're mopping all the all the Kangs up? Is that what? I, I, I you just showed me a Coliseum full of these asshole dudes, and I'm just yeah. supposed to expect that the TVA that spoiler alert for Deadpool the opening. I'll give you five yeah. seconds to click, to, click, to click away. Actually, I'll just leave it at that. That's all I'll say. Yeah. That 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 TVA is going around taking down Kangs. Like that's crazy, dude. That's crazy to me in my mind. So, and not that I I'm not a, a diehard Kang fan. I don't need Kang to be around. But it's but, something different, and, and yeah. it's and it's a fresh and new take. Yeah. And which and. Uh, I just say it because we're going to when I'm done talking, we're going to lead into it anyway, Um, which doom is also everything they're doing with doom is a new is a new take. I will give them that I will. uh, And I'm I'm excited to see it to a degree. I I still think that I I hope that is a Tony Stark variant, not Victor Von Doom. But they did say on stage they used the name Victor Von Doom. But I'm hoping that that's a bait and switch of some kind. But Mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. I, I don't know. I just. 
obviously I'm talking about it like I'm 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 highly disappointed. I'm still gonna be there day one. Opening night, I'm there. I yeah. don't get me wrong. I am there, <laughs> like I'm buying my tickets the day the tickets become available. But it's just I really loved Eternals. I really loved all these little different so I loved Captain uh Falcon and Winter Soldier. And you guys hate me for that. <laughs> don't hate me for that, sorry. <laughs> but you guys you guys hate that hate that show. I don't know. Maybe I just I'm bitter because I've argued with so many people, especially being on TikTok about the MCU. Uh and and don't get me wrong, I, I know that I, I'm not blind to the MCU and it, and its issues. I think and another that is also mentioned in Deadpool. Um and I love that. I actually I love the self-awareness in that. Uh because yeah, it hasn't always been great. But even Multiverse of Madness, I loved. Yeah. Which a lot of people didn't, you know? It's a re really good movie, yeah. I don't know. What? Say that again? <laughs> I mean, in terms of a movie, bro, I mean, it might even be better than Deadpool Wolverine, like movie structure wise. Oh, snap, bro. That'll like, be a anyways, conversation. That'll be a conversation. Um, that'll be a conversation. I think I'm done. I, I'm I'm just rant, I'm I'm yapping it. I mean, you I mean it's very valid. As for someone to go to bat for all of the changes in the MCU, for someone to go to bat for all of the decisions that they're making, just for them to seemingly go back and give all these people like all of the ammo they need to combat you. I mean. I I, I want to clear. I don't plan on arguing about it. <laughs> I haven't really even been like in the defense of the MCU yeah. that hard. Like, like I don't even really hardly post that much anymore. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it, just, it's it's fully understandable. You know, mm -hmm. it's I, I get where you're coming from as someone that likes it and uh, is still kind of hesitant on it. I think um, I am probably just from even this discussion, I think I've become the most hesitant of the three of us when it comes to Marvel projects. And maybe that's wrong, but that's just what it seems like. Yep. I think even after the Russo brothers news, well, like I still have a level of confidence and excitement. I'm more so saying like just in general for Marvel, like a lot of their projects, like I told you with Deadpool and Wolverine, like, I, I went with a group of friends that I usually go with and like I remember No Way Home like the days leading up to it like that's all we could talk about is like I can't believe we're watching this in three days and whatnot and then mm -hmm. watching it so many times in theaters and like just sitting down to watch Deadpool and Wolverine I was expecting for it to like disappoint me or upset me which I think is why I actually liked it as much mm -hmm. as I did uh, which we'll talk about that later but um I, yeah, I just think in general that I'm, I am starting to see more of the perspective of the general audience that has kind of been on this like Marvel has fallen off train. And I'm not like fully to that extent of like the, it should have been done after Endgame. I'm not that extreme when it comes to it, but I am like reflecting on the last couple of years and just being like, there's very few projects that actually have like stuck with me and that I actually like care about looking back. I didn't hate Eternals when I first watched it. I haven't watched it since and I really don't care that much about it. And that's true for a lot of projects in recent years. There's like, like you were saying, like Shang-Chi, No Way Home, Guardians 3. There are very few movies that I actually point to since Endgame, and there's been a lot of projects since then, very few that I point to and just, like, have a fond memory of or want to go back and rewatch. And so, like, as a whole, I can understand people who are, like, really, really upset. I still have faith in them, and I haven't fully given up on them. I think that they have a lot of course correction to do. And so even like Charlie, you saying like they're almost confirming that people were right about their shortcomings. It's like, what if, what if it's all true? Like, what if they also reflect back and think that they've failed and that's why they are course correcting. They're saying the people are correct because what if they actually are correct? And what if that leads us to a better path forward? Like that's, that's, that would be my biggest response is like, 
regardless of what they're acknowledging, if it leads to a better outcome, we should be happy about that. Like that's what all of us want, regardless of necessary necessarily like the motive behind it. I think if we get there, everyone will start to be happy again. Yeah. Well, sure. probably not everyone, but like <laughs> definitely not everyone. I yeah. just my thing I because I've always thought that I think people are too hard because on on the current state of the MCU, because when we always look to at least I always look to phases one through three, imagining they were perfect. Absolutely not by any stretch of the imagination. Iron Man three was deemed shit by the fan base early on. Now there's people that love it. Sure. Uh, Thor two right afterwards deemed shit, still shit to this day. Um, Captain America, winter soldier. Fantastic. Still fantastic to this day. Um, things like Avengers two, a lot of people didn't. It was lukewarm when it came out. You know, I would I would liken that to something like Multiverse of Madness, unless unless people think that that's a bad, like a objectively bad movie. I think I would say that from my perspective, I think most people are, are lukewarm on Multiverse of Madness. If if not, they then they hate it. But um, I don't know. There's just so many like maybe it's the fact that a lot of these projects came out like either back to back or one bad one, one good one, bad one. It's like that kind of, that kind of notion. Uh, Because, and and that's probably it because Black Widow, probably bad. Then Shang-Chi, then Eternals, then No Way Home, then Multiverse of Madness. We've been on this up and down since the beginning of, yeah. Yeah. So I guess I can understand it from that perspective. Uh, But I also, like I, like I was saying, I, I feel like, a lot of people just aren't like they're looking at these movies at, at, at such like a surface and uh, at a surface level way, and uh, almost like uh, granted, you it's a subjective art art form. I don't want to take that away from anybody, but I just a lot of the time it seems like we're writing projects off before they even come out because of x y or z i mean look at things like the marvels which granted wasn't fantastic wasn't fantastic wasn't a great movie wasn't bad though i don't think it was bad the villain was bad but that's always been an mcu problem villains have always been bad deadpool and wolverine's villain not that great no not necessarily bad but it wasn't great you know um it's it's just this back and forth thing. And I think that people, this is what I think happened. I think people blew their disdain for a couple of projects and they looked back since it was such an up and down thing. They were able to look back and think that it was more negative than it actually was. Because if it's an up and down thing, having a good project and then a bad project back to back to back over and over and over again, it's not actually all bad. It's just as much positive as it is negative. And Granted, you could talk about things like with the TV. We're just talking about the movies, I guess, with this standpoint. Then you also look at things like the TV shows. Weren't always great. WandaVision, good up until its last episode. Falcon Winter Soldier, a lot of people didn't like. Loki, season one, decent amount of people liked. Then they got things like What If, which very, very mid to bad. Um, then I would agree. I would start to agree with like the quantity over quality aspect when it comes to the TV shows, and there's they still have issues with that. We have Agatha coming out in a month, basically. Who's excited for Agatha? You know, I'm not. I don't. You don't put your damn hand down, boy. <laughs> I, you know, like I don't know. I, I I'm, 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 I'm just yapping again. But truthfully, that's what I think. Think the problem is. I think that people looked at these projects and the and the up and down notion and when they walked out of a bad project they'd look back and think like oh well this other one was bad too without thinking about the good ones in between um and just writing off the whole phase as if it was some terrible shit show slop fest because now after multiverse of madness wakanda forever which not as good as the first black panther don't get me wrong still good movie though i think most people agree it's still a good movie um which I, I would I would liken that to some other what was like a, a half decent good movie in phases one through two, you know, half decent, but not fantastic. So I don't know. 
that's yeah. why I, that's what I think when I to to your point, Ben, that's what that's my response to your point about um Marvel noticing that maybe something was wrong. I don't think that I think they know that they well, obviously they noticed that something was wrong. That was showcased, and like I just mentioned with, with Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, they noticed something was wrong, but like I don't think that I think that the grand overarching problem of it all, it wasn't actually that much of a problem. It was just a problem in these people's heads. And they got to echo that into TikTok, Twitter, et cetera. And then all these people started to agree with them. And it's just, I don't think that the evidence is quite there to support it. Me personally, uh, with just the film projects themselves. Cause a lot of people aren't even watching the TV shows. Look at the viewership for Miss Marvel. Look at the viewership for, um, echo you know i think i think with the exception i think loki season two still had good viewership but word of mouth yeah with that we um we also got new uh logos for uh for these movies uh Look at avengers that. feels matching bro love it yeah yeah, beautiful. I also love the orange, the orange and fire. It looked so slick, and it just like I don't know, it just it just screams Secret Wars to me, you know, like that colorway that like it just looks like a prestigious movie. Um, Avengers Secret Wars come in May twenty twenty seven, and again, Avengers Doomsday, great logos, like mm -hmm. beautiful logos. You could see the the difference in these. Um, and obviously, with that, we got the um, the big news of the night, which was um, RDJ, Robert Downey Jr., not returning as Iron Man, but uh, returning as Doctor Doom, uh, just to feed into, uh, I mean, you know, just to continue our conversation of is is Marvel backtracking? Are, are they are they listening? Are they seeing the discourse? And are they? retreating are they tucking their tail between their legs and being like okay well here's the russo brothers oh and here's rdj like here's some big cash grabs like all right we're good we're good we're good or are they being like all right obviously this hasn't been working out let's all sit down pull back on all the movies and all the production and let's tell a good freaking story that will get butts in seats and that will also bring back the feeling and uh unfortunately right now we don't know and that seems to be what a lot of the discussion is because with this news comes a lot of these comic book virgin nerds that want to act like they're high and mighty above everyone else because their precious little dr doom isn't the same as comic issue number 247 and it's like are they right do they have a point saying that this is a big cash grab and that there's no creativity here and that everyone is just cheering for it like sheep are they right are they correct i don't know but i would like to be on the side that says no trust the process i think this could be good i will go to bat for this decision i love the decision of bringing rdj back and putting him in the doctor doom role i think it could be something that's very interesting we have not seen anything happen like that. I think somebody pointed out that there's an issue where Tony Stark does do that, and he does fall to um, the uh, the moniker of Doctor Doom, and that they have done that in the comics before. Cool. So then maybe Marvel isn't just losing all creativity. Maybe they have a plan. Where along the lines, because like what Charlie said, because of what, a couple of bad apples, we think that Marvel just doesn't have any more creativity we think that Marvel is just retreating back to their poor little Russo brothers and their golden boy RDJ. Like, is that what's really going on? And I would like to believe not, but it seems like from what I've seen online is that a lot of people think that that is what's going on. And there's been a lot of slander again for, uh, for their beloved Dr. Doom, which I'm all for. I get it. You know, I, I get wanting a, your mind's adaptation of that character to come alive. But, you know, going to the extent of calling this a non-creative cash grab, I definitely don't agree with. Um, I also saw this tweet that says, if there's one thing the MCU has nailed lately, it's handling variants of very important characters, showing the depth, 
the deaths of the versions that we knew weren't disregarded while still showing the new versions and wrinkles to each character. Keep this in mind with Robert Downey Jr. returning. A picture of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, a picture of Gamora, a picture of Loki. Characters that were all variants, that all died, that all came back and have been handled perfectly. And their legacy has not been torn up because of the decision to bring them back. So who cares if Logan dies and and then Hugh Jackman comes back as Wolverine? That doesn't fucking ruin that movie that you can't sit there and watch that and be like, yeah, this ending doesn't even matter because his, spoiler alert, body gets dismantled and used as a weapon in Deadpool. Uh, disconnect that. It's not hard to disconnect that, at least in my opinion. I've never sat there and bitch and moaned about something like that, you know, like – it's, and it's the same thing with RDJ returning as Iron Man or returning as Doctor Doom. You can't sit there and watch Endgame and be like, oh, yeah, well, guess what? That doesn't matter because Marvel went sacrilege and, co and uh, casted RDJ as Doctor Doom and should be put in creative jail for that. You can still sit there and watch that movie and his legacy not be – do we forget how comic book movies work? Are we just forgetting how comic book movies work? It's a comic book movie. They can come back. This isn't real life. This isn't real fucking life. It can happen. And so uh, just to see the, the discussion all over uh, Twitter this past weekend of, I mean, people just thinking that Marvel went out there and just shot um, someone in the fucking head in the middle of the street. I mean, just to see all of that really ticked me off. So, yeah, I was, I mean, I was going to bat online for it. And I can see, again, like, like I said before, we don't know. Bottom line is we don't know um, what, what they're thinking behind the scenes. They could very easily be retreating. They could very easily be throwing all creatives out the window and just going back to what worked in the past. Or they can listen – like they've done in the past and just be listening to the people and kind of sat back and said, let's pull back on, on the production and let's come up with a good plan that, that um, will please both comic book um, cry babies and the general audience because, uh, and so, and so, yeah, we just don't know that. And that's the bottom line. We don't know. So you can jump to one side, you can jump to one argument, you can jump to, you know, or you can jump to one or the other conclusion. I mean, I'm I'm slamming people online for doing that, but I'm over here doing the same thing just on the other side. Um, let's just not completely write them out is, is what I'm trying to say. Let's just not completely jump ship and write them out. Like I see a lot of people tagging James Gunn being like, make Superman good, bro. I need I need a jump ship. Like I'm, I'm done for it. And it's like, like really, such a like scene. really, dude. Because yeah. because your fucking precious Doctor Doom isn't who you thought it would be. Like I, I don't know. At that point, it just it seems like people just want something to. Uh, people just want to be pissed at Marvel. People just want to participate in the discussion of hating Marvel and trashing on Marvel. At that point, that's literally all you're doing. You just you're looking for something. You're fucking looking for something. Because if you weren't you would just be like, oh shit, Robert Downey Jr. is back and he's as he's back as one of the greatest Marvel villains of all time. This could be cool. I'm down for this. You're just looking for something to hate. And so I don't know. I, I've been waiting all weekend to rant to to rant about that because I just I've gotten tired of seeing all the comic book truthers <laughs> literally wanting to come shoot Foggy in the fucking head for what he did. Like, let's be fucking real. All right. There's a fucking comic book. What are we doing at this point? You just want to fucking cry. Just you just want to bitch and moan because you want to bitch and moan. That's all it is. All right. Um, um I will say uh what I am and I touched on it a little bit already. I, what I'm most disappointed by if if he actually is Victor Von Doom. That's that's all I'll say. I I do think like I am excited for this. I think there's a lot of great story potential, um, i.e. with Spider Man, um, any of the other Avengers. I saw a TikTok. I don't see why this would ever happen, but um, I saw a TikTok of what happens when Morgan 
that Tony's daughter sees sees him sees him as evil now. I was like, damn, that would Loki hit, but like I don't see how Morgan's gonna fit into Avengers Secret Wars or Doomsday, but whatever. Um, I think there's a lot of great story potential with it. But uh, like obviously, this is why I don't think there's lots of reasons I don't think it's uh, it's actually Victor Von Doom. Um, I just don't think you like you fundamentally cannot make Doctor Doom work as like a, a comic accurate version of him with while casting someone like Robert Downey Jr. Because you know damn well he is not keeping that fucking Dr. Doom mask on yeah. because they're not doing the Iron Man inside the helmet shots with Dr. Doom. They're not doing that. Okay. Bro, but if they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, he's taking that mask off, which like already that's fundamentally against what Dr. Doom would do. He keeps the mask on because he loves perfection and he has a scar on his face or his, his face is scarred up to hell. And so he wouldn't want to showcase any imperfections, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I think this is a bait and switch. Um, I'm not going to be even, even if he is actually Victor Von Doom, I'm not going to be too upset by it. I just really want like actual Victor Von Doom to blend in with the fantastic four for once in, in film so well. Like, I just want that to happen. And with that being the case, if he actually is Victor Von Doom, I don't think Robert Downey Jr. is signing on for another 10 years. I don't I, I don't think he's doing that. And I want Victor Von Doom to be a character that lasts around, that lasts for a while. You know, I don't want... That's because that's how he is. He 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 he's a bad guy. He's a foil to the Fantastic Four, sure. But then aside from that, he has his own country that he runs, Latveria. He 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 builds up his country and builds up his his people. He cares about his people. And then we we bounce back and forth between him and any other bad guys all the time in comics. I think we lost Aiden, but I'll keep rambling. <laughs> um I for that reason, I I just wish. I was going to say educated wish, but I can't make it work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, my only wish is that it, is that he is actually Tony, uh, Tony Stark that just went bad and decided to, to dress up like this. And then maybe I, I feel like we say this a lot, like the, the real villain will get inspiration from this villain. It's like the people are thinking that that's, what's going to happen with Tom Holland's version of green goblin, doc, Ock, et cetera. They're going to, the people in, in the six, one, six universe are going to get inspired by, um, are we still recording? Yeah, we are. Okay. I didn't know if it stopped recording when he let, when he leaves or not, since he's the host, but, uh, a lot of people have that theory. I don't think that's actually what's going to happen, but then there's also the take. Um, I'm interested to, and I'll bring this up to, to Aiden when he comes back as well. I, I, I want to know your guys' stance on this that Iron Man has already done so much. Like he's already so pivotal for the MCU in so many ways that like he wasn't in the comics before. For example, he built Ultron when Hank Pym was supposed to build Ultron. Um, he was the one that got to save, that got to save the universe. He was also, uh, Peter's, uh, or sorry, he, uh, he was the inspiration for Peter, two of Peter's villains, you know, um, so to have him be another version of a big Marvel character, do you think that that's too much Tony Stark influence in the MCU? So I guess I'll answer this specific question. Cause I haven't really talked much yeah, about, I know you haven't talked about it. Yeah. Life. Um, so for this specific question, I think that, it's pretty obvious that Marvel has to pick and choose what they want to focus on. They have, they have to pick and choose what characters they want to highlight. I mean, I think it's fair to say that like you could pick literally any character that's been in the MCU and put them on either side of they're more significant in the movies than they were in comics, or they're less significant in the movies than they are in comics. That can be said for every single character and that's like a problem, but also a great thing for the MCU is that they have such freedom with it. And so they, you know, over the course of 10 years, they took a specific route, focusing in on a core few characters. 
And that's the way that they decided to build the story. And I know like there's even complications with like, even with mergers happening and whatnot, like who knows if Marvel just owned everything, if we would have the same set of movies that we did in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They could have brought other characters in sooner or had the focal point be been on something else. And so I think it is fair to say that like Iron Man was like a heavy, heavy influence and was like, you know, the most significant hero. Um, you know, you could argue Captain America, at least up until Endgame, then obviously it's Tony Stark. Hmm. Um, but I think it's because like they they knew where to put their focus and where they wanted these storylines to go. And so they get to decide that with Dr. Doom as well. I mean, they they get to determine how long they actually want him to be around. We don't know if he's just going to be around only for, you know, these next two Avengers movies. And that might be it if that's what they decide to do. I kind of, <laughs> I, I mean, I hope that it's longer than that because that would essentially be like what we got with Thanos, which to be fair, we still look back at Thanos and regard him as a villain very highly. But like you were saying, Charlie, um, and I don't know the extent to which this happens, but it sounds like Doom's involvement in Marvel is like a lot more prevalent and like his interaction with characters and like just the extent of it, there's a lot more that you can do there versus Thanos. You could set him up and they really, you know, did justice to him in a couple of Avengers movies. So I really think that like, if they decide that they only want two movies with Dr. Doom, it's like, okay, but you know, are we just going to do the same thing again where we then go another few years and then introduce another big villain only for two movies and then just keep repeating the cycle, introduce more heroes, kill off more heroes. And then it's just over and over and over again. At some point, you know, it'll be really interesting to see where Marvel is like, 10 years from now like what are we what are we even doing are we starting to branch away from typical heroes versus villains and start setting up avengers versus x-men and like random you know crazier stuff like that or are we sticking more to like these typical origin story sequels and then building up to avengers films so i think it'll be interesting to see their approach and obviously when you're casting a powerhouse actor like rdj who's already been in marvel like i don't think he's gonna sign on for another 10 years but who knows i mean i i don't think anyone expected him to return to marvel period like he already did 11 years and now he's coming back for at least two more and so i would have seen him come a secret wars 100 i could have seen him coming back as you know, a Tony Stark variant in Secret Wars. Sure. Like, I think the likelihood that we see, like, variants of other characters is highly likely for not only cast that we've seen, like, you know, I could say Hugh Jackman is Wolverine, but, like, could Daniel Radcliffe as Wolverine show up in Secret Wars? Sure, anything's on the table. Literally anything. Like, all the fan casting. People want to see Tom Cruise as Iron Man. Like, you know... Anything's on the table, Secret Gosh, Wars wise. Um, I about those days. Yeah. So, but like specifically this casting, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how long they actually want to use the character. And I mean, I don't think we'll really know. Well, obviously, we won't really know till Secret Wars, but like it would be a little weird if it was just. Avengers 5 and Avengers 6 and then that's it for Doctor Doom and but but also like to an extent the only like they they haven't confirmed too many characters for those movies obviously we know Secret Wars is going to be huge but one of the things that they made sure to specifically say was the Fantastic Four are in both and so like that at least depending on how they go about it Maybe it will be enough. As long as they have a good path forward after that, maybe we'll be happy enough with it. But I don't know. Only time will tell. Let me cook real quick. All right. 
Here's my prediction. Cut his mic. Here's here's how you please both sides of the uh, of the fandom right now, right? Um, you have your green and gray Doctor Doom, your Victor Von Doom, right? You have your typical Doctor Doom, and he's being played by Robert Downey Jr. He's teased at the end of Fantastic Four. He kind of looms over. Your Avengers Doomsday obviously has him as the main villain. And this is honestly what I think that um, they were trying to do with Kang, with Jonathan Majors as Kang. Because we had Kang in Quantumania, but the the general discussion was, is this our actual Kang? Because it doesn't really seem like he is. He doesn't seem like a feasible threat especially if he's getting his ass kicked by the Wasp and Ant-Man. Like, is this really our Kang, our big bad of the next Avengers movies that lead into Secret Wars? Well, this is kind of the same thing. Is this our Doctor Doom that's going to be in, that's going to be our big bad for the Avengers movie that leads into Secret Wars? Robert Downey Jr. can be this Victor Von Doom as a Stark variant, as... A, a doom from a different universe a tony stark from a different universe but what happens after avengers doom after avengers doomsday and you get your god emperor doctor doom and then that's your prime doctor doom and that takes you into secret wars that way you can have your rdj cash grab whatever it is that they're trying to go for i mean i would love to see robert downey jr play a villain play a marvel villain i think that'd be sick dude and especially donning the the mask and the the green attire i think that'd be awesome do i want a comic accurate victor von doom yes if that's in your plans yes give it to me in that case let him don the silver and white let him be the one to rip out thanos's skull and backbone and make him the main villain of seeker wars whatever movie you have in between of doomsday and secret wars let this man take over. Let Prime Doctor Doom take over. And you can even have him kill RDJ's Victor Von Doom. You can have you can set him up as a huge Secret Wars level threat to where him and all his minions and everyone on a battle world has to go up against our Avengers and whatever the team looks like post Doomsday. I think that works, and I honestly think that's what they wanted to do with King. And after that. Your next big Avengers movies, you get out of the multiverse saga and you start the mutant saga. And you end that off with Avengers versus X-Men. And then you do a, a reboot of the franchise, whatever you do. Because at that point, it'll be almost 20 years since the MCU started. Yeah, I think, And I honestly think that's what they wanted to do with Kang. I mean, they have Avengers Kang Dynasty and then Secret Wars. Is this not exactly what they're doing except just using von doom and then using rdj to play the first doom the same way that we had our first king get his ass kicked by ant-man and the wasp only to set up like our big bad king i don't know that's just i was just thinking of that right now um and i figured maybe that lines up our dr doom now lines up with what king's path was on and after jonathan majors it makes very makes a lot of sense that they're doing the same thing just swapping in doom yeah, I, I definitely think they're heading for a, a soft reboot of some kind after Secret Wars. Uh, soft reboot, hard reboot, I think it's more likely to be a soft reboot because uh, I'm sure the X-Men are going to play some kind of role uh, in Secret Wars and the X-Men are quite literally just getting started within the MCU and everything, every MCU universe adjacent. So I think that the X-Men, if anything, will be something that survives the Secret Wars uh, incursions or whatever it might, it may be. Um, I also think that, uh, as far as what you're talking about with, uh, replacing Kang and whatnot, I, I, I mean, obviously that's the goal, um, for sure. Like they're, they're not hiding that, but I do find it interesting. I, I correct me if I'm wrong. Did they ever like officially announced that Avengers 5 is no longer called Kang Dynasty? Or was that just scoopers that, that said that? Oh, when? You're talking about whenever, whenever that happened. Yeah, whenever it was no longer called Kang Dynasty. I think, I I feel like they, uh, I feel like I saw something the other day that I, that I liked or posted from a long time ago that said they were 
that it was Marvel, like saying like like if it came, came from like Deadline or Hollywood because or because I remember I mean well even going into Comic Con it was just it was widely known as it was just Avengers five right right I just don't know if I I don't remember if like only Scoopers said that um, I think it was it, like now. my time to shine or if it was I can like, I can I can double check while you continue your um because if it wasn't it's just c- crazy to me <laughs> like if they just showed up. Two years ago at Comic Con, they announced it as Kang Dynasty. And if they didn't officially announce that it's no longer called Kang Dynasty, they show up this year, and then they're just like, mm, you "Nah, nah, it's Dooms, it's it's Doomsday now," <laughs> and without saying why it's not Kang Dynasty anymore. I know they they probably don't want to get into it. They're just uh, they, there, there's a whole lot of legal mumbo jumbo that they could probably get in trouble with if they say specific things about Jonathan Majors and and cutting ties with, with, with him and, and Kang and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, that's just, if they, if it wasn't officially announced, I just think that that's kind of wild that they didn't even talk about why. Wow. What's crazy is that just in November, just seven months ago, Michael Waldron was the writer of both Kang dynasty and secret wars. Damn. Bye bye dog. I guess people just didn't like Multiverse of Madness, brother man. Sorry. Yeah, and then that's whenever um, Dan- Destin Daniel Cretton uh, left King oh, Dynasty. Yeah. I forgot he was a there. little. That was like a, a week before the Waldron news. Is whenever. Um, that's fine. He's got to focus on Shang Chi too. Whenever they announce that, to focus on Shang Chi too. Yeah, but I'm trying to look right now so y'all can continue. What if that's going to happen? Do you think they're going to announce that at like at D23 or do you think D23 is going to mostly be about future TV shows and stuff? I'm going to be honest, I don't know, but I'm I'm I mean, I don't know how much from that tweet that I sent y'all. Um I, I'm I don't know. It, it's looking to be big. I'm hoping that it's big. I feel like it would be a lot I mean, it's a they're, Disney event, you know. Yeah. They're gonna want their TV show news and stuff. So they're definitely talking about Daredevil because Charlie Cox just said that he's gonna be there. So that'll be. High. And I think if it's coming out in March to March ish time, Loki might be the perfect time for us for them to actually like have drop like a first teaser for the show mm-hmm. online yeah. for everybody yeah. to see, not just D twenty three people. So might be looking forward to something like that but if 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 daredevil's gonna be there that kind of points to me that like maybe it's just more focused on the shows and they're gonna talk about disney plus stuff since it's a disney-esque event but uh i, mean, I just if, don't think they'd have much to talk about like they'd have agatha or is that after agatha no it's it's before agatha comes out in september like they'd have agatha and then daredevil and then like the only other show that we know is coming next year is iron heart yeah and then like i i mean i don't know what maybe they have all the have, animated shows too but it didn't did marvel animation not just have its own panel at comic-con am i wrong about that i don't think so i thought i heard that somewhere that it was I'm, i could to. be wrong i could be wrong but i feel like that i would have heard news like if they if they had because if and if they didn't talk about this, I feel like that's weird. Because uh, that Spider Man show is supposed to come out this year, mm. and then I think a Wakanda show, but that might actually be next year. That's, I thought that was is that not animated? Yeah, it, it is animated, uh, just oh, like yeah, the, the Spider Man show is too. Um, um, yeah, there's I mean, there's a ton of series planned for 2026 the vision quest, the Wonder Man. Um, oh my god, I forgot about Wonder Man. Were oh, they not yeah. filming that? Like, yeah, I think that's done people. filming. I think is it done to... because I thought didn't it get shut down because of strikes? It definitely did for a little bit, and there are also it? someone someone also died on set too. Really, um, yeah. I didn't know that. I remember, I remember that a stuntman. Well, died. That, we should definitely get news on that then because I vividly remember they kicked it up, they got their Wonder Man casting, and then I want to say that's a that's right when the strike started, and then that just got swept under, and nobody. I mean, I I at least hadn't heard anything since then. Yeah, um, I did find some news about Kang Dynasty. So, Culture Crave posted on February twenty first, a couple months ago, that Kang Dynasty is no longer the title, um, and that Marvel was reportedly moving away from Kang before Jonathan Majors was ever fired. It, they 
yeah, started moving away after Quantumania failed. Right, right. Um, so that was a Hollywood. Did, did they Reporter. list a source? Hollywood Reporter. Oh, Hollywood. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so I guess so it was that was in February that there. they dropped it. Okay, so then never mind. To my point about them not talking about it, then. I mean, they still obviously have to tie the loose end of Quantumania post credit scene. That will have to become I really a just I, conversation. Yeah. I really worry that they're just going to try to do the TVA line from Loki season 2 and just ha- call that good because they said that they're going to take care of all the kings. They they won't um they won't I, I don't think we'll see a scene. I don't think we'll visually see anything. I don't think they want to spend too much time on it. At least you think I we won't have a scene of like RDJ Doom coming in. He'd probably say something in passing, blowing them all up or something. Um, uh, THR is pretty credible because in December of last year, so two months before that, the, they broke the news. They said that Avengers King Dynasty is now being internally referred to as Avengers Five. Marvel is deciding between recasting the role or pivoting to a brand new villain as the Big Bad, which obviously we saw that they ended up pivoting to a new villain as a big bad i like i said dude i would not be surprised if if rdj as dr doom is just is dr doom and kang are just on the same trajectory to whereas if majors never got fired the way this plays out is the exact same except doom is the is the character and not kang because you have infinite you have like we saw you have infinite jonathan majors you have this king that's like not so much of that's a Avengers five type of big bad, and then you have a Secret Wars level king that can still be played by majors. Now it's just Doctor Doom. You need to find someone, grab RDJ because he'll get butts in seats, and then you have your Secret Wars level Doctor Doom that will don the white. I think that's honestly what they're doing. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I think so too. Um, I mean, best way to please both sides. Yeah. Any uh, closing thoughts? I know we wanted to. He wants to uh, pull up that uh, that list. Go ahead and pull that bad boy up. Oh yeah. Oh, I have it up. My, uh, <laughs> let me reap in my uh, in my gold. <laughs> yeah, I have it up. I guess I'll just share my screen. How do I do this? Does this work? Yeah. I literally just have our video pulled up. Yeah. So, man, I was kind of cooking. <laughs> Which oh, list yeah, is yours? Yeah, wait, where, I was going to say, where are the names? The one with Fantastic Four on top. Yeah, Aiden is the first one, Charlie's the second one, I'm the third one. Okay. I remember we kept it a secret because then we yeah, posted I was it posting somewhere. On TikTok, and, yeah. yeah. But, I was cooking, um, not going to lie. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> just looking at this like some of the glaring things that stand out is like, damn remember you know, when it was called new world Charlie's Order? List? like I just, yeah that's crazy charlie and he season two so low below echo Listen, bro, i'll i'll admit to that that one was a that one was a flop for sure for sure yeah for for audio listeners uh my list my top five were uh Starting with five, Daredevil Born Again. This is ranked, phase five and six ranked by anticipation. I uh, had Daredevil Born Again, and then I was more excited for Secret Wars. On top of Secret Wars was Guardians Volume 3. On top of that was King Dynasty, and then my most anticipated was Fantastic Four, which so far out of all of those looks the most promising. Won't lie. Uh, Charlie, you want to name your top five? Oh, my God. You might as well just stay quiet for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay for audio listeners um my top five <laughs> starts with number five ant-man and the wasp quantum mania <laughs> which do it okay this is by anticipation okay at the time we thought kang was a big bad listen okay that was i was cooking with that i was You're the only one who put it that high that's all i'm saying <laughs> uh my number four is avengers kang dynasty um which is now avengers Doomsday. Doomsday. Uh, my number three is Daredevil Born Again because, gosh, Daredevil season one through three were fantastic. And so far, and they, they had to stop and rewrite this new one. 
because it, it was apparently bad. So I have a lot of high hopes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number two is Fantastic Four, which, uh, as we've established, I'm actually more excited for it than Aiden is, but that's fine. I don't know how mine ended up at number two. I think uh, whoever was in charge of this list well, clearly wasn't me. <laughs> uh, I actually moved it secretly, but that's fine. Uh, and then my number one was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which can we say I was wrong? <laughs> can we say I was wrong? Don't think so. Definitely the best thing that's come out of Phase 4 and 5 so far. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Other than Loki Season 2. Loki Season 2 is fantastic. Your, your list is really going to depend on how good Blade is. You could you have the chance to like absolutely dog walk us on in terms of blade. What if Armor Wars? Armor Wars is a movie now. Yeah, so, and we all had it yeah. low. That's true. <laughs> I mean, but, I don't know. Charlie's list just like Mar the Marvels at six. Just uh, that is kind of crazy, Charlie. I have Thunderbolts right. higher than both of you guys, too. So if that movie's good, whew. I only have a one, one spot, spot higher. Still, still, still. <laughs> it's higher. Okay, it's we'll higher. See. Uh, so yeah. my list, starting at the number five, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Number four, Avengers King Dynasty. Number three, Fantastic Four. Number two, Daredevil Born Again. And number one, Avengers Secret Wars. And Which, that's the safe pick. I mean, it's yeah, just you guys, that's a, That's exactly why I didn't do it. That's why it's number eight, bro. <laughs> like, you guys are, you guys were like, oh, dude, Avengers Secret Wars is going to be fantastic. Like, dude, there's going to be so many characters. And I was like, bro, we don't know anything about it, bro. Like, well, what are you guys doing? Dang, it's anticipation, yeah, bro. It's if anticipation. You, are you, what are you anticipating? What are you anticipating? Nothing. You're not anticipating <laughs> anything. There's nothing about the movie that you know. Now there is. Now well, you know the, RDJ's the, the movie. List, I'd still put it at number one. So there you the go. List, the list has changed now that the movies are coming out. It's literally just if you didn't predict it being better than that other one, then you're wrong. So that's what the list <laughs> is now. For, I mean, uh, Charlie, just look at the three that you put right above Secret Wars and tell me that you're going to stick Oh, by my. List. All right. For everyone listening, above Secret Wars in terms <laughs> of anticipation, Charlie had – Secret Invasion, dude. The Marvels, and <laughs> okay. The Marvels is the only one I'll give you guys. Like I was smoking some grade A crack when I put that one there, bro. Like that one was like, like I was literally, I was just right. I was like, I felt it in my bones. I was just like, this is gonna be good, bro. This is gonna be good, and everybody's just hating on it, pre hating on it. But Secret Invasion, dude, they dropped the ball with that. Like. That had the potential to be fantastic. Yeah. That opening episode, I still think to this day was was fantastic. I think that, the way that they killed off um Colby Smolders, I can't think of it. Maria Hill. The yeah. way they I thought, like, dude, the way they were setting stakes for that show. But then after that, it was a hard drop off. That, hard. I'll say that show was so that show was so bad that it sent us into like um, like months, almost a year long retirement. <laughs> <laughs> true, like, I think that's what we were supposed to be covering. So we bad. Never, we were yeah. supposed to cover it, and then it was just like, God, this shit is ass, bro. Yeah, this is terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. But then Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum, I've already told you guys, bro. It, like, you guys cannot knock me for that. That one, I, I can't believe you guys didn't have it higher than you did. That was, at, at the time, we thought that that was going to be the first appearance of our big bad. And you guys were just like, yeah, yeah but drop it at nine. Drop go back. Bro, at nine. Every every time we bring this list up, I'm going to brag about this. I was cooking because I said, oh, the only reason we're hyped for this is because of Kang. Other than that, it's another Ant-Man movie. So I put it low and hey. I cooked. I cooked. So if Thunderbolts is ass, oh, my gosh, I cooked, bro. Like, literally, look at that list. It doesn't matter what's so if Thunderbolts and Armor Wars, I guess, and Agatha and Ironheart, but I mean, let's be real. If Thunderbolts is ass, that's really the only one out of that bottom five that or the bottom 11 that has potential. If Thunderbolts is ass, I cooked. I cooked. <laughs> I have the best list on here. Whatever you say, I, mean, I rest my case. Good. You have Loki season two too low, in my opinion, Aiden. Um, I mean, it all depends. Like I said, it all depends on. I mean, Brave New World and Blade, Brave New World, Blade and Dead and Daredevil could absolutely cook. What we didn't have, they didn't announce Deadpool at this time, huh? No, Deadpool's not even on our list. Yeah, he announced that in uh, 
I think September 2022. So yeah. Yeah, because that was a little bit after they uh he Ryan Reynolds dropped that thing on YouTube, right? Said that that would have been that would have been in our all of our top fives. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the way that they announced it, like announcing Hugh coming back, that was I, I think I would have been. I think for me, honestly, if I can go, if I can like think about how I would have placed it, it'd be two or three for me, and then everything would just shift down one. Uh, it probably would have knocked Quantum Mania out for me. Maybe knocked down King Dynasty as well. Stop the cap. It's no, I, <laughs> no I, like I four or five. It, it probably would have put it. I probably would have put it at four, and then King Dynasty would have moved down to five. Well, okay. Well, um, what an episode! Yes, thank if uh, thank you guys for watching, listening, etc. I uh, I I feel I say this every time we record an episode. Now, I apologize for us being gone. <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, it's, uh, we all got busy schedules now. We're all living yeah. lives. This dude on the bottom is getting fucking married. Can you believe that? <laughs> crazy. Real soon. And I wasn't even invited, chat. <laughs> That's <is> crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, but uh, no, seriously, uh, if you guys are watching and you're a returning listener, viewer, Memish, looking at you, pal. Looking at you, pal. This is for you. Not Sorry we weren't Mimish. there. For Comic Con, it we didn't it didn't work logistically, but this is the conversation. Um, thank you guys, seriously, so much. Um, I, our Dune Two episode did numbers, probably because that movie was fantastic, and every and yeah. the whole internet loved it, and rightfully so. Uh, but yeah, I, we're happy to be back. Um, I think we're planning on doing a, a Deadpool and Wolverine spoiler filled episode later this week. Uh, so that should be up by this weekend probably and yeah uh, that's that we'll, we're still working out some kinks as in like recording days posting days sure. i would like to have like a, a full schedule to where it's like all right we record this day we post this day as long as we're like posting on a specific day if it's messy then it's messy who cares like if it's just random as long as it's weekly um i said i wouldn't make any promises but i mean i'm confident in making the promise that we will be here next week for Deadpool. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, I won't promise more than that. I'll just let y'all have to trust me that I'm back fully and wanting to get that grind on. But I'll just keep it short and sweet by saying we will be back next week for Deadpool and Wolverine Talk. We better be. like <laughs> we, we, we have had so few conversations about the movie Yeah, yeah. just because yeah. we wanted to save it for a discussion. I might go well, rewatch it depending on if my fiance is busy or if she doesn't want to come watch it or if she does want to come watch it. I, I'm I'll for sure make some time to go rewatch it and get my notes on in there. So, uh, yeah, very excited. I got some thoughts. I have some thoughts on that right, movie. <laughs> so, uh, um, but yeah, thank you guys again so much. We appreciate you guys seriously. Um, we hope you have a wonderful night, day, morning, afternoon. Uh, wherever you are, whatever time you're listening or watching to this. And let us know your thoughts on the Comic-Con news in the comments below if you're on YouTube. If you're on Spotify, you can't do that. Give us a good rating, though. Please, yes. We appreciate it. Awesome. We would love you forever uh, and ever. And Aiden will give you five bucks, each of you, from his uh, wallet. He, I genuinely will. I will pay you five dollars if you rate us five stars and you comment your cash app. Blow this, blow this video up with comments of your cash app. I will literally send you money to give us engagement. Um, Aiden H talks on all socials, but I mean, it's really just TikTok and YouTube. And if you want to go watch me react to One Piece, that's really all my TikTok's good for. So. If you want to go see my reactions to One Piece, Charlie's going to watch One Piece here soon. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get him on board and uh, maybe we'll have another maybe we'll have another episode of Charlie's thoughts and watches through through One Piece. I'm going to get him to watch this goddamn show if I hey, if bro, it kills I, said, me. I said I'm starting it tonight. I'll send I'll send you a picture. I'll send you I'll send a picture to the group chat for proof. All right. He's a least. Hey, Nate talks on, believe me. on no all way. socials. Uh, TikTok, YouTube. I don't post a lot on YouTube, but I will be getting back into it because your boy got his PC fixed. I'm back on that content grind. And Nate talks YouTube, uh, TikTok, Charlie. You want to plug your stuff? Uh, yeah. Um, it's Cubsin on uh, both YouTube and TikTok. Uh, I'm mostly just posting on YouTube. I do 
completionist runs of any random video game that I feel like doing. So I'm currently working on one right now. And these honestly take a lot longer than I thought they would to make. So it's a uh, long go and it's two months between <laughs> uploads right now. So, um, but one is coming rest assured, but uh, yeah, it's cups and on YouTube. Check me out. I would really appreciate it. And drop a like on my newest uh, last of us video. And then come back in here in the comments and spoil it for Ben because he hasn't played the uh, part two and he's just watching the show. And so we should spoil season two for him. Uh, Thank Benjamin. You. Uh, right now, Benjamin movies on YouTube, but haven't haven't uploaded a video in a while. Um, <laughs> and he's coming back to TikTok. He's coming back to TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah. You can find I, Ben I, here. You can find Ben here. Yeah. Mainly you can find me here. That is the biggest thing. But I think, um, you know, once I get settled, settled more into things in life that I'll, I'll probably pop up somewhere else with content, probably YouTube. TikTok. You're just, it just wouldn't be the same without you. These platforms wouldn't be the same without you. Um, you can find all three of us here. Um, and even if one of us can't make it or one of us is gone, you can find the other two here. There might be episodes with Ben and Charlie. It might be episodes with me and Charlie. It might be episodes – with me and Ben, it all just depends. But these are the core three. We will be here, and uh, we will be here weekly, and for sure next week with a Deadpool and Wolverine episode. For real this time, because your boy is fully bought in and uh, can't make money off TikTok right now, so I have to pull back on the One Piece a little bit, which means I can go a little bit harder with the with the podcast stuff. So uh, that's neither here nor there. We will see you in the next one. Thank you for listening. Thank you for any love and support that you show. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Adios. Sayonara.